attivazione dell'allarme. All right, so it is now two days before Christmas. We had our fun exploring Venice yesterday, but this morning we got up bright and early, got the complimentary breakfast at our hotel, then walked over to the Venice train station, literally a three-minute walk over a bridge over the Grand Canal from our hotel to catch the train to Florence, or as they say in Italy, Firenze. It was about a two hour train ride, very comfortable, workaholic that I am. I caught up on emails and also some last minute research for what we were going to do in Florence. There were some scenic aspects of the train ride, just looking out the window at various kinds of farmlands and pastures and that kind of thing. Then we got to Florence, got to the train station, huge train station by the way, but very, very central. So it's super convenient. We were walking to our hotel to drop off our stuff, and what did we see in front of the Baptistry of St. John? But a group of Italian Santas making some kind of a Christmas toast while on bicycles. We took in that site, then we went to our hotel to check in, drop off our stuff, and then we visited the San Marco Museum briefly before going to the Academia Gallery to see Michelangelo's David, and this is where I will hand this vlog over to me at San Marco. Well, we just made it to Florence, and um, first thing we're going to do before we get to the, uh, before we go see David is the uh, Museo San Marco. Uh, so this museum was formerly a religious convent and uh, it is home to many uh, amazing frescoes, chiefly uh, by the painter Fra Angelico. So I'll see you inside. Bye. So we wrapped up at Santa Marco, then walked a literal three minutes or so to the Academia Gallery to see David. Here's me again. Now we're here at the famous Florence Academy Museum, home of course to the Michelangelo David sculpture, but there's also some other cool art uh, in here, especially in this main entry room. So we're gonna take a look around before we see the famous David. You know, there's also this pretty, uh, pretty interesting musical instrument museum. So I'm gonna go check that out now. So in here, it looks like we got some instruments various string instruments, such. It's like from the 17th century. Violins and cellos and such. Also got some brass instruments, trombones, horns and such. We got some clarinets and piccolos over here. Very interesting pipe looking instrument here. It's a very, a very interesting instrument here from the late 18th century. What is this, Caroline? A piano guitar. A piano guitar, my goodness. Here's a more familiar instrument, a viola. So from the 18th century. And we have some instruments over here that did not appear to go mainstream to the present day. Not sure what this is. Tromba Marina. Tromba Marina is what the sign says. Uh, very interesting instruments here. Hurdy gurdies. So, very interesting. 
And we have a couple of harps of chords here. I believe the one, this one is the original and this one is a replica. We got this vertical piano here. It looks like I have another harpsichord over here. All these instruments uh, in the late 17th, early 18th centuries, so. Pretty cool. Well, there he is. There's the man of the hour, Michelangelo's David. Some other goodies in this gallery. Got some other paintings over here. We've got, looks like some unfinished sculptures over here. Maybe even a slightly unfinished painting. Of course, what we're really here to see is the sculpture of David, the shepherd, psalmist, king of Israel. So Michelangelo crafted, of course, his David from a big hunk of marble between 1501 and 1504. David stands 17 feet tall. Very, very muscular figure. Of course, gotta take a look at the back side. Because, well, that's what we do. Just checking out the back sides. So, let's see what we got, okay. that famous disproportionately large right hand. So on David's right side we have another gallery here. It's flanked by some more beautiful paintings. Got some great stuff over here. Let's see this boy. We got another Got a room full of sculptures, a bunch of, I have never seen so many busts in one place in my life. Got some ladies, wow, she's got, she's got some holes, unfortunately, in her body. That kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies, not very attractive. Okay, that, okay, let's, let's, let's check here. She's actually looking pretty good. Oh, yeah, okay. We got some other stuff. Some other naked ladies over here. Yeah, it's basically this room. Just a bunch of, uh, just a bunch of sculptures. I believe a lot of these are done by uh, Lorenzo Bartolini. Uh, this little room here. A bunch of golden 
religious art. <coughs> of course, the center is being the, the crucifixion. All right, so after we wrapped up at the Academia Gallery, we got lunch at Trattoria Zaza. Food was just all right there. It was expensive though. Uh, we had better, cheaper meals in our opinion later in our trip. One thing that we learned quickly here is that the bread in Tuscany. So Tuscany is a region in Italy. Florence is the capital of that region. The bread in Tuscany is actually quite flavorless. So just be prepared for that. Don't be surprised if you get bread at a restaurant in Tuscany and it's, it's pretty lackluster, don't be shocked, right? That's not an issue with the restaurant necessarily. That's just how bread is uh, in Tuscany, or at least in uh, in much of our experience in Tuscany. After we wrapped up at Zaza, we got some gelato for dessert, which we did many, many times on this trip. I mean, you're in Italy, right? You have to have gelato at least once a day. And what they tell you on how to pick gelato is avoid places that just have huge mountains of artificially colored, like super brightly colored gelato in big plastic bins. There's a lot of articles on this online, but a shortcut we found and we use on our trip, not only for gelato, but for many other food establishments as well, is to use TripAdvisor, the app or the website, and set the language to Italian. And you will get the opinions of locals on a particular establishment. This place we went to here, I think it was called Leonardo. We liked it. We liked this place's gelato. Then we headed back to our hotel room for a bit. Here's a little room tour I gave before we headed to the Uffizi Gallery to see a bunch of paintings and more sculptures. Take it away, Logan. Well, we're getting settled into the Hotel Brunelleschi, named, of course, for the famous uh, architect of the dome of the Florence Basilica. So here's a room. Here's the restroom. Nice. nice shower. Lights over here. Got a window. Now we're heading over to the Uffizi Gallery. Here we are at the uh, Uffizi. You do have to walk up a ton of stairs from the ground floor to get to the first floor. And uh, the first room over there is basically just a bunch of, um, what is it, charcoal? Yeah, artwork by uh, an artist named Giorgio Vasari. Giorgio Vasari, mostly charcoal. Uh, in this room was some more charcoal work, some stuff from the 19th century. Uh, sculptures, pretty cool uh, painting of of uh, Florence. And then here was an exhibit by some Chinese artist that we were kind of confused what was going on. Oh, uh, the entrance is somewhere else. So this, uh, this is the first floor of the Uffizi. Now we're going to go up some more stairs here uh, to the second floor and see what's in store for us. See you at the top. So now we're on the second floor of the uh, Uffizi Gallery. Um, on this, in this hallway here, you're basically going to see a ton of sculptures. There is a very interesting sculpture over here. Uh, it looks like a 
a centaur by his legs. Um, a lot of Roman period stuff. Uh, like for example, uh, this bust is of uh, Gaius, who was uh, Caesar Augustus's or Octavian's grandson, actually. They originally thought it was Caesar Augustus himself. Um, you know, from history that this fellow Gaius, he uh, actually died young. He was going to succeed Grandpa Caesar Augustus to the throne, but he actually died. This guy died when he was 24. And of course, uh, Caesar's stepson, Tiberius, became the second emperor of Rome. So we're going to check out some more uh, sculptures on this floor. Um, in this room over here, there's some pretty cool uh, depictions, especially of Christ on the cross. Uh, and one of them, he looks, he just looks very sad. Um, this one here, he just looks very sad. So, there's some other stuff here. Interesting thing we noticed, they like to prop the heads kind of out a little bit, if you can see that. This one too. So. <coughs> All right, so we're gonna head back out to this hallway of sculptures, see if there's anything else interesting out here, so. In a bit. All right, so we're about halfway through this uh, hallway full of sculptures here. And I'm gonna go into this room here. It's labeled Botticelli, early Renaissance. Not all this, uh, not all this work is by Botticelli in this room. Uh, this one isn't. I think I've seen this painting before in a textbook or something. It says the Duke and Duchess of Urbino. Okay. Well, what I'm really out, what I'm really uh, looking for, is probably the most famous painting uh, in the Holy Fusi Gallery, which is of course uh, the Birth of Venus. So, kind of on a hunt for it now. It's, it's crowded here. of Venus by Sandro Botticelli. And of course we can't miss uh, the famous Spring by Sandro Botticelli, probably the second most important piece of art in the gallery. Okay, so at this point in the interest of time for this vlog, I'm not going to keep showing you room after room in the Uffizi because it is just so large. There are so many pieces of art in the gallery. There are many, many more here than in the Academia Gallery. Now, some tips on visiting the Uffizi. You will save money by buying tickets through the official website for Enza Musee. IT. I will put a link to it in the description. You will save money by buying your tickets directly on that site rather than through a middleman site, which will charge an extra commission. Now, if you're really trying to save money because it's going to be 10, you know, 20 euros, depending on the season, just to get into the Uffizi, you can go the first Sunday of the month. Okay. Why? Because in Italy, state museums are free on the first Sunday of each month. Obviously, the museum will be more crowded then. Line to get in will be long, so keep that in mind. If you're a museum nut, there's a Firenze card for 85 euro, at least as of right now, as I'm publishing this. Um, you buy this, you get in all the museums free for 72 hours from your first entrance to a museum. I'll put a link to the description to the Firenze card as well in the description below. 
So you just got to do the math, right? Compare the cost of the forensic card to the price of admission for the museums you want to visit. Um, note there's also the forensic card plus for an additional seven euro that gives you uh, essentially a 72 hour pass on public transportation in Florence. We didn't do this. We didn't buy uh, either forensic card. Pretty much everything we did was walking distance to our hotel, which was very centrally located, and we didn't visit enough museums to make the forensic card worth it to us, but that is an option. Also, speaking of the Uffizi, beyond just the sculptures and the paintings at the Uffizi, the views from the gallery uh, are amazing. The views of Florence, uh, the view of the Duomo, the Palazzo Vecchio, the uh, Arno River, the Ponte Vecchio, just just uh, amazing, uh, stunning, just the vantage point uh, where the gallery is located. So uh, make sure you take in the views as well from the Uffizi. After we were done at the Uffizi, we really just took our time walking back to our hotel before dinner, and we just enjoyed the magic of Florence at night during the magnificent holiday season. So. At this point in the vlog, for the next few minutes, we just want to share with you just a little bit of that with some raw and edited clips of Florence at night during the Christmas season. Then after these clips, we'll head off to dinner in the Santa Croce neighborhood later in this video. But for the next few minutes, we just invite you to enjoy Florence at night a couple days before Christmas. So after this lovely time just taking in our first night in Florence, we went back to our hotel, rested up for a couple hours, and then walked about 20 minutes to an amazing restaurant called Sens Altro Bistro in the Santa Croce neighborhood of Florence. Food here was amazing. It wasn't necessarily traditional. It was more fusion, I would say, but it was delicious nevertheless. And personally, it was one of the most memorable meals I had in Italy. Caroline would agree. I told the staff that this was Caroline's 30th birthday trip, which was true because not only was this a baby moon for us, 
but also to celebrate Caroline's 30th birthday, which is in January. They gave her dessert with a candle. She blew it out. It was really fun. Then after finishing up dinner at Santa Altro Bistro, we walked to the Basilica of Santa Croce. Unfortunately, it was closed. I was hoping that perhaps the doors would be open because this is actually the burial place of so many famous people like Michelangelo, um, Galileo, the astronomer, Machiavelli, the philosopher, uh, Rossini, the composer, a few other lesser known but still notable historical figures. Unfortunately, um, the church was not open, but it was still amazing to see. There is a monument here to the poet Don Dante Alighieri of Dante's Inferno fame. Dante's actually not buried here, uh, but Dante was born in Florence, which is why this monument to him is here. So by the time we finished taking in the Santa Croce Basilica, it was about 9.30 p.m. We walked back to our hotel, called it a night, and we definitely had to rest up because the next day, Christmas Eve, we climbed the 463 steps to the top of Brunelleschi's Duomo. So we will see you then.